Hey students, it's me, Mr. Fitz. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about multiplication and area in this video. And here we have our multiplication table. You, many of you have hopefully seen this before. Um, this is something I would recommend you memorize, to be honest, because this is like a really useful thing for you to know in life, um, is your multiplication table. So multiplication table, what that is, is an area model, right? So if we think about it, like there are all these like little one by one squares. Right? The dimensions of this square are 1 and 1. And actually, the dimensions of this square are 1 and 1. So they're all just 1 by 1 squares. Right? Um, and so we can think about it like, if we want to say to find the area of a rectangle, say the area of this rectangle with sides 3. And if we think about like just counting the side lengths, 1, 2, 3. So that's one side. And then this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the length of this side is 6. And actually, the length of the opposite sides are the same, right? So this is also 6, and this is 3. So if we want to find the area of this rectangle, it's just length times width. So we could say, like, this is the length, and this is the width. Um, and so that would just be 6 times 3, and that would be 18. So 6 times 3 is 18. So if we think about that, we just count up all of these 1 by 1 squares. How many of them do we have? Let's we'll count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have 18 of them. Right? They're just 18 of these little squares that make up the area of this rectangle. So that's all area is. It's just a two-dimensional space. And what are the dimensions? Well, we have one dimension is 3, and the other dimension is 6. So and 3 times 6 is 18. And we would say this is like square units or something like that. And that's why we say square units, because they're little squares. All right. So the other thing I wanted to point out is on the multiplication table, you could also make squares instead of, well, rectangle is a square. But here we have, say, this square here. This is a 6 by 6 square, meaning it has side lengths of 6, 6, 6, 6, right? They're all 6. Um, so what is 6 times 6? 36. And that's the square of the area of a six side length 6 square. Um, so the length and the width are just the same. So I would also memorize these diagonal numbers here. These are all the square numbers, very important. And we're going to talk about square roots later on in this unit. Um, but right now, we're just going to focus on area. So anyway, super important to know those. All right, let's take a look at an example. Um, so this is one of those problems that you've probably seen before, where you have to find the area of the shaded region. Uh, so let's take a look. So. They've given us the dimensions here. And remember, a rectangle has opposite sides that are the same length. So if these are all rectangles, um, and what we're trying to do is find the area of the shaded region. And to be clear, that's the darker region here. Um, so all of this part here, we're trying to find the area of that. And I'm going to show you a couple ways to solve this problem. One way, um, let's just go ahead and think about the dimensions of this red rectangle, the whole thing. And so the dimensions of this side, we could call this the width, um, would be 2 plus 6. Well, what's 2 plus 6? That's 8. So that's the length of this whole side here. And then the length of this side is 3 plus 7, or 10. So we could say that's length times width, or 10 times 8 is 80. So the area of this entire red rectangle here is 80 square units. So if we think about it like back on the multiplication table, like you would have 80 little squares down here, and then you'd have a little 80 down in the bottom right corner. All right, let's take a look at this little tiny rectangle here. And we know the dimensions of this. So the length of this side is 6, and the length of this side, sorry, the, we call this the width or the length. And we're going to talk about what, does that matter? Um, and the length of this is 3. So 6 times 3, we already talked about that, or 3 times 6 is 18. So if I subtract those two things, because I want just the shaded region, so it would be the whole thing minus this part. So I'm going to take that part out, cutting that part out. Think of it as like a piece of paper, and you're just going to cut out that piece. So that's 62. So I want to talk about order, right? Does order matter? Like 3 times 6, 6 times 3, what is it? Well, length times width. Multiplication is commutative, meaning you multiply in any order. And so I wanted to highlight that here. These are the same rectangle, right? A 3 by 6 rectangle or a 6 by 3 rectangle. And we just turned it 90 degrees, right? And we're going to get to rotations later in the year. 
But we've basically just rotated this rectangle, and so you have either this rectangle or this rectangle. But they're the same dimensions, then it's just like, and they're the same area. So six times three or three times six, it doesn't matter. So if you want to call one the length and one the width, it's up to you. So um, again, multiplication order doesn't matter. So let's look at another way you could have solved that problem. For those of you that don't like subtraction, and I'm, I kind of like always think about this. I, I'm always like one that like adds thing together, things together instead of subtracting. So how I would have solved this problem is I would have like drawn in a little line segment here. And remember, this is you can do that. This is now going to create like this rectangle here. And so we know this is three, right? And this is three because the opposite sides are congruent. So this would also be three. And then this would be two. So I have this little tiny rectangle right here with dimensions of three times two. That's going to be six. And then I have this other rectangle here on the right, which has dimensions of eight. How did I get eight? Well, two plus six, that's eight. And this is going to be seven. So eight times seven is 56. Just add them up. 56 plus six, that's 62. There you go. So I kind of like that strategy. All right, let's look at one more problem. OK, so let's take a look at this. So the frame has a width of 2 was the area of the shaded region. So we're just trying to find the area of this, this frame here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sketch in the widths like that. OK, so I know all of these are 2. So these are just 2 by 2 squares. So that's 2, and this is going to be 3, and that's 2. So I can go ahead and figure out the side lengths of this entire rectangle. Right? Because if this is 2, this is 3, and 2, so 2 plus 3 is 5, plus another 2 is 7. So this whole length is 7, and then this would be 2 plus 7 plus 2, that would be 11. So the area of this entire red rectangle is just 11 times 7, right? Length times width, 11 times 7. We can even look at our multiplication table, and we memorized it right. Um, and so we know 11 times 7 is 77. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. So that's the area of the entire rectangle. Now I just need to find the area of this hole, um, the inside rectangle, and think of pictures of that as like just the hole in the shape. Um, so that, carve that out. And so that area is 7 times 3. Uh, what is 7 times 3? That's 21. Um, so now I just need to subtract them, right? I just need to take the whole rectangle and subtract out this missing piece. 7 minus 21, so the area is 56. So one thing you could have done, like I did in the previous problem, is just think of it as like an addition problem. And you can just calculate the area of all of these little rectangles. So we actually, we have a square. Um, and to be clear, a square is a rectangle. A rectangle is not always a square. Um, but we'll talk about that later in the year. So a square is a type of rectangle. So let's take a look. So we have 4, 6, 4, 14, 4, 6, 4, 14. If we add all these up, 14 plus 14 is 28. Uh, that's going to be 38, 48, uh, 52, and 56. So there you go. All adds up to 56. Check it out. Make sure my math is right. All right. Uh, let's check out one more problem. Sure. Hey students, it's me, Mr. Fitz, uh, again. Um, so this is a little extension on our, hey, it's me in the corner there, um, on this uh, video on area. So I wanted to talk a little bit about area of triangles because you're going to see lots of triangles in this class. So here's an example of a delta math problem. Um, so here, let's read this together. What's it say? Um, Drag the yellow point until an accurate height of the triangles drawn. Sometimes we see they're called altitude. And then afterwards, fill out the empty boxes below to determine the area of the triangle. So this is a cool way because you can kind of see like, oh, so the height or altitude of the triangle is going to have a right angle. And that's what this is. This is like shows it's perpendicular and this shows the height of the triangle. So you want to just kind of drag this thing until you get to that right angle. This shows me that the height is 2.22. And then this is the base here. So this is going to be the base. So wherever the height intersects, that's the base of the triangle. You could have drawn the height like coming from other side, sides. It just happens to be being drawn from this side. So um, 
So the length of the base in this case is going to be 8.7. Just type that in there. And the length of the height is 2.22. Therefore, the area of the triangle is, and here's the formula, it's one half. Here, I'll show you the formula. Um, you'll get this formula sheet too. Um, the area of, oh, they gave us a cool, oh, that's Heron's formula. All right. Well, anyway, we'll talk about that sometime later in the year. Um, area is one half base times height. Um, this is uh, Heron's form. You can take a look at that, Google that if you want. Um, it's pretty cool, actually. And so we're going to go ahead and multiply those together. The area of the triangle is one half the base, which is 8.7, times the height, which is 2.22. And it tells me what the answer is, 9.657. So submit the answer. Yay, I got it right. And so when you're using Delta Math, just make sure like you look at the annotate uh, the animations. They're all really cool. Kind of shows you like it's drawn like perpendicular parallel to the ground, if you will, um, which is kind of a nice way to see the triangle. Okay. All right. So that's one example. And then I'm going to show you the. All right, students. Here we go. This is the last two problems. I promise. I know this is a long video, but um, here we go. So what is the area of this triangle? So we need to know the area of a triangle formula, which is 1 half base times height. We also need to know what's what. So this is the height of the triangle. So I'm going to label that H. And this is the base, 8.8. .8. That's the base. So the area is 1 half, 8.8 .8 times 6.6. .6. So this is my crazy notation. I'm um, notating uh, multiplication with these dots. Sometimes you'll see x's. That gets a little confusing when algebra is involved, though. Um, so let's just go ahead and put some parentheses around everything so to make sure that we know that we're multiplying here. So if I multiply these three things together, 1 half times 8.8 .8 times 6.6, .6, .6, what do I get? I get the area is 29.04 square inches. That's inches to the second power. That's just um, a unit, so we don't have to worry too much about units. Um, uh, you'll see them occasionally, uh, especially in our first couple units. Um, but yeah, that's square inches. So what does that mean? That means like if we had to fill this triangle with a bunch of one by one squares, how many would we fill it with? Just a little more of the, than 29 point, well, 29 would be 29.04. Why one half? Why is this formula one half? Well, because a triangle is really just half a rectangle, right? Or it's half a parallelogram. So we're gonna see some more of that later on, but that's why it's one half. Let's look at one other problem. Um, you'll see these in Delta Math 2. Uh, this is kind of working backwards. We're going to have to actually figure out the length of, of either the height or the base from the area. They've given us the area. So let's go ahead, take a look. So I know the height is 2.2 and I'm looking for my base. And I know the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to plug in what I know. It's going to plug in 3.63 for the area. I'm going to plug in 2.2 for my height, and I'm going to solve for B. So I have to do a little bit of algebra here. This is like flashback to uh, algebra one. Um, but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this algebraic expression right here because I can multiply in any order. We already learned that, right? So if I rewrite this as 3.63 equals 1 half times 2.2 times B, then I, I can go ahead and combine these two things. So what's 1 half of 2.2? 1.1. So now this is a little easier as far as an algebra problem goes. 3.63 equals 1.1 times b. So algebra, we have to do the reverse. Algebra is undoing arithmetic. So we think of a reverse order of operations. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the reverse of multiplication, which is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 1.1. And that's my answer, 3.3. .3. All right. Well, hopefully this helps. Please let us know if you have any questions. And thank you. Thank you so much for watching.